Hey, what's up, Backflow Broskies? It's your boy, the Backflow Bro. Today we're gonna test the double check valve assembly utilizing the USC 10th edition procedures. If you're in a class right now, you're, you're prepping for either the AWWA or ABPA exam, we have a lot of expanded videos on how to prep exactly for that exam. Today we're just gonna go through the base test procedures. Try to follow along. If you're missing something, you should pick it up. Um, were you using the Kruger Instruments TK2 test kit? Uh, it's ASSE 1064 compliant. Uh, if you need something that's on the USC list, might be tough. Uh, we actually applied for that, but they wouldn't approve it. They wouldn't review it. Uh, they're kind of weird with that. Uh, Henry Chang over at USC is kind of like, I guess he's friends with the Midwest guy. I don't know. Uh, you need USC 10th edition approved test kits. We do have a lot of stuff going on with Arbiter Backflow. You might want to check them out. They have a digital test kit. Essentially to be USC 10th edition compliant, you essentially have to be a digital one. A few different products out there. The Arbiter one is definitely approved and good to go wherever you're going. Your East Coast, the TK2 should be fine. You just have to be like ASSE. ASSE is kind of like more East Coast. Uh, USC is more West Coast, U University of Southern California. Well, I appreciate you tuning in. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. We have quite a wide range of videos utilizing different test procedures on different test kits. Uh, feel free to comment if you have a question. A lot of times people have the same question. So today we're going to do the USC 10th edition with the double check. First step, I know what you're thinking, like, oh, I'm going to start opening test cocks. Uh, that's actually not the first step. The first step is notify, identify, inspect, observe. If you're prepping for an exam, they might be like, you know, what is, who are you notifying? What are you inspecting? Things like that. You should know what those words mean. There's like a very elaborate definition in the book. If you haven't read the book, you should probably read the book. You have a written exam as well. I'm sure you're preparing for it. If you're in the field and you're just refreshing, it's totally cool. Make sure you do the procedures as written. Uh, some people do like take liberties or they go, oh, I've already memorized the procedures. You should do these procedures exactly the same. So notify, identify, inspect, observe. You're gonna flush the test cocks. For USC, they don't really care what order you go, but you should go one, open and close one, open and close two, open and close three, open and close four. If you're doing an RPZ assembly, you do have to do them in a specific order for the double check you don't for USC. Install fittings to test cocks. These already have the fittings. If you notice, they're like quarter by flare. Uh, some of the larger ones, they might be different. Close all needle valves on your test kit. For us, we just have two, the high and low needle valve. It's marked on the gauge, high side, low side. High is gonna be the left side. Close those. You have a bleed off valve arrangement. That's in case the shut off one leaks. Uh, for USC, they say to put it on no matter what's going on. So we put your bleed off arrangement on test cock two. Attach clear hose to test cock three. That allows you to kind of see where the water level is. Um, some other procedures, they don't say to do that. They say just make it level with the test cock. For USC, make sure you have this little clear hose to make sure you're complying with everything. Attach high hose to the high side of the gauge and the bleed off tee. Typically the high hoses are red. If you have multiple hose, say you have a five valve kit with three hoses, you gotta make sure all the other hoses are level or you just remove the hoses and that's fine. For us, we don't have the other hoses, so you just attach the high hose. While everything's open, you open test cock two. Open high bleed, close high bleed. That pressurizes your test kit. Open test cock three slightly to fill it with water. Uh, you want to fill that little clear tube with water. Close shut off two. Close shut off one. You want to make sure your test kit is level with the top of the clear hose. Also, some people say to hold them vertically. I would say hold them horizontally because your test port here should also be level. So everything should be level with the top of the test cup or the short clear hose. Now you shut, shut off one, open test cock three. You're gonna bleed off all the extra water. Your gauge is gonna drop down to the reading you get. So 
six is what I'm getting. If you see the little tiny uh, lines, those are 0.2. The bigger lines are 1.0, so there's three, 2.8, 2.6. I'm reading 2.5-ish. So you get your reading. When the water stops running, you record it's on the gauge. If you have leaky valves, there's additional steps. Make sure you check our other video. We have the diagnostics broken down, utilizing different test kits. Uh, for this particular video, we're just gonna go through the standard procedure. If you need the diagnostics, definitely check out our other videos. Um, so now we're gonna move forward, close all the test cocks. For USC, it says open shut off one, and then just remove all equipment. If you move your equipment over, you're probably okay, but if you're doing a very specific exam where people are kind of like, want you to fail, you might wanna like remove everything and then put it all back. Attach your bleed off T to test cock three. Attach your high hose to bleed off T. Attach clear hose to test cock four. So we're just gonna do the same test, just move it over one. Open and close test cock four to fill the hose. Close inlet or open test cock three. Pressurize your kit, open and close high bleed. Close inlet shut off. When you close your inlet shut off, your gauge should be level with the top of the clear hose. Then you open the Tuscock 4. I'm getting 1.9, 1.8, it's level. So that's your differential pressure across check valve two. Now you're done, close all test cocks, remove all equipment. So essentially you're doing a directional flow test across both check valves. When you open your shutoffs, make sure you open shutoff one first. It could introduce a back pressure event if you open shutoff two first. Um, so USC, they want you to do. The rule of thumb is if you're messing with shutoff one, shutoff two should already be closed. So now we're good to go. Uh, appreciate you liking and subscribing and commenting on this video. Really helps with the algorithm and things. Uh, definitely check out our other videos, the Backflow Pro. Need test kits, check it out. It's uh, Cougar Instruments. Uh, we do. We have new test kits if you need a new test kit. Need a calibration, definitely check us out too. You can mail it in, we'll bring it to any of our classes that we're doing. Uh, appreciate you watching the show and um, I'll see you later.